everyone, it's Marissa from the Duxbury Free Library. Today I'm going to do Crafternoon with you and I'm going to teach you how to make a book by hand. I thought this was a fun project because it is something I like to do and I've been doing for quite a long time. So we're going to do a real simple book structure. I also thought it was a good way to sort of collect your thoughts and your feelings and maybe your drawings while we're living through a historical time. And the Duxbury Rural and Historical Society is doing a program called Our Times, a program for Duxbury's youth, and they are collecting people's stories, kids' stories, about how they feel about what's going on right now, um, what it's like for you to not be going to school, be isolated, and they are going to collect all those stories and when the library reopens, we're going to have a display of them. And then they're going to be put in the Drew Archives, which is a place in Duxbury where they care for historical materials and they are going to preserve them for you. So it's, you're gonna be part of a historical document. The information about that program is on our Facebook page and the DRHS's Facebook page so I thought that this making a book could be a, a step into making your piece that will be part of um, the Our Times program because they want an eight and a half by 11 single sheet. So your, your book that you make today, you could just use it to collect um, how you're feeling. You can also use it for whatever else you'd like. It doesn't have to be for this, but I just wanted to teach you how to make one. Okay. I'm gonna move these materials closer to me. So I am going to do this today with materials I think you would probably already have at home. I have a set of simple book binding tools that I've been using for a long time, but I don't want you to go out and buy things um, that you don't, A, don't necessarily need, <laughs> and B, you should probably be inside anyway. Um, so, you will need, just let me go through this bit by bit. You will need regular computer paper. So eight and a half by 11. This is just some eight and a half by 11 paper. We are going to fold this paper and this is gonna be the size of our book. I also have for my cover a piece of cardstock, which is just a little bit heavier and it's a different color. You don't have to use cardstock if you have another a little bit heavier than computer paper paper. Um, if it's a piece of construction paper or even just a piece of a brown paper bag, you just wanna make sure it's the same size. And we're gonna be folding our paper this way. So this is gonna be what your book looks, looks like when it's done. So cover paper and inside paper, same size. To measure where um, we're going to, we're going to mark our holes that we're going to poke first before we stitch. This is not like sewing fabric, you need to make the holes before you sew. So you will need a ruler, any ruler will do. This one's in inches. And I'm gonna do it in inches. I'm gonna measure it in inches, so. You will also need to poke your holes, or to mark your holes, you will need a pencil. And I'm also going to use this to actually poke our holes in our paper. I have a special tool for this called an awl, and it has a little red rubber thing on it because it's really, really sharp. But if you, you don't need one of these to do this project, I'm just showing you some of my bookbinding tools. So we are going to use this to mark our measurements on our paper, and we're also going to use it. So it is a mechanical pencil, so I think it, we, we can get a pretty decent um, po poking a hole with it. You will also need a needle, and mine has escaped me. Oh, here it is. So this is a tapestry needle, um, and it is blunt. So the, this is the tip of it and it's not sharp. And 
If you have a regular embroidery needle, you can use that. Um, I use these just because if I accidentally um, stabbed my paper, it would leave a hole. We don't want that. But if you have a needle that has a point, that's okay. Just be careful. And it needs to have, so this is the eye of the needle. Is it picking up? Yeah, I think it's okay. Um, and it needs to be big enough to accommodate your thread. So I am using, I often use thread that's already waxy. This is a waxed thread. But because I know you've all been doing Larissa's friendship bracelets, today I'm gonna use embroidery floss and I haven't figured out which one of these will come across better um, while I film this. But you can use any color, any color thread you want and what I recommend is, it's really easy with this thread because it's made up of six separate strands to stitch back through your stitches by accident. So if you have, so I have this big chunk of beeswax that I use to just rub my thread across like so and make it a little bit more sticky so the strands will stick together. If you have a candle or even a bar of soap just to get it a little bit um, better at getting those strands stuck together. You will also need, well, you'll need scissors to cut your thread. And to make sure our fold on our paper and our cover is really nice and crisp, I have a tool called a bone folder. You do not need one of these. You can also use a spoon. And we're just going to use the back of it to press down our paper and get those folds really nice and sharp so our pages stay together really nicely. So the first thing we're going to do is fold our paper and our cover. So let me move. I'm going to lose this needle. I'm going to stick it right there in the beeswax so I don't lose it. The first thing we're going to do is fold our inside pages. So you just want to bang them on the table, make sure they're all even. And then you're going to do, I've heard this called a hamburger fold. So you want to fold it along the long side. So it's like a, it looks kind of like a greeting card. So you want to fold this, make sure they're all nice together and just make sure the edges are lined up and you can just press it down. and use your spoon and just make sure that's a nice sharp crease. So there's my crease along the top and those are my pages. So I used five pages, uh, five pieces of paper so you'll end up with 20 pages. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my cover. So I'm just gonna fold, I should, I'm gonna fold it towards me so you can see how the fold looks. So edges nice and lined up, press it down, and you can smooth it out with your spoon. There we go. So there's your cover. Ta -da. If you wanted to end here and just have a small folder with paper in it, you could, but we're gonna stitch it together. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to measure where I want my holes to be. And I'm gonna measure right along this crease that I made. I'm gonna turn it like this. So we know that our paper is eight and a half by 11 along this side. So our crease is also, oh, our paper is eight and a half inches, sorry. It's eight and a half by 11 total, but along this crease it is eight and a half inches. So I want to mark the center point and I'm going to also do the same measurements on the cover when I get there but I like to measure them separately. So half of eight and a half is four and a quarter. So I'm just going to put my ruler down to get the best angle. This light is a little bit bright. It's a little bit better. So put my ruler down and measure four, this is four and a half, so here's four and a quarter. And I'm gonna make these marks big so you can see them. 
So there's my center point. And I am going to do five holes all together. So then I want to measure about half an inch down from, this will be the, the top or bottom of my book. So I'm going to mark half an inch. From the top and half an inch from the bottom. Make my marks nice and big. And then let's see, between this and this, that between this mark and this mark is four inches. So I'm gonna mark the half point of that, which is two inches here. And here, no, you can eyeball these measurements. You don't have to measure them. I just figured I'd show you. So those are all the marks that we are going to poke holes in and then stitch through. So this is the inside of the book. I'm gonna do the same measurements on the inside of my cover. So. Four and a quarter. Half an inch from the top. Half an inch from the bottom. And then two inches between those two marks. there and right about there. So now we know where all of our spots to sew through will be. Okay, so I've marked the spots where I'm going to sew my book on the inside of my pages and the inside of my cover. Now I was just thinking about how I was going to poke the holes with this mechanical pencil and when I do this I want to poke through all of them all at once and I don't think that this is going to be sharp enough. Um, so I am going to use a safety pin or if you have a sewing pin or a regular sewing needle, something with a point. I thought this might do the trick, but I don't think it's going to. So what I want to do before I poke my holes is I want to clip my pages together. Um, so I've got a paper clip. Just so when I poke through all the pages, the holes are lined up in all the pages and I could well, I wouldn't do these normally together, but once I poke these holes, I could have used these to measure this, but the measurements are the same. So paper clip your pages together. We wanna to use something pointy. Um, so if um, you're going to do this, make sure you've got a grown up handy for anything that might be sharp. So I have this safety pin and it's got a point on it. And this is, this is what I need. Um, so it's a good idea with the mechanical pencil, but it's not gonna do the trick. So I'm gonna take the pointy end of my safety pin and push it through my paper all at once, sort of waggle it around. Do it for the next one. And the next one. And then the last two. Be careful you put your hand on the back that you don't push the safety pin onto your hand. Let's flip this over, it's easier to get it in this direction. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the inside of my cover. Those, those are a little bit smaller, but they're the same measurements as the pages. And if these 
pencil marks bother you now? Like if you don't want to see them since we made them pretty big so you could see them while I filmed, you could go back and erase them. But we're not going to do that for this. We're just going to go for it. Turn this over. Watch out for my finger. Okay. Now these holes are a little bit small, so now is the time where I'll go back in with something that'll make a bigger hole like um, my mechanical pencil here. And we want these, I'm gonna poke from the inside out so you can see. We wanna make these big enough so you can, all, you can see through them. Um, if I was making a different book, I would probably make these holes a little smaller, but this is also for you to learn and so you can see what I'm doing. So you can see that pencil, tip of that pencil coming through. You could use a regular pencil too. It's tricky. Come on, come on. Almost. There we go. Boom. You could, if you really wanted to, um, make all the measurements and punch all the holes separately. But I like doing it this way because then I know that they're all in the same spot on all of the pages. In case if your measurements were off a little bit. So I'm going to do the same on the inside of the cover. Poke my holes through. This should be, yeah, this should be a little easier because it's just one sheet. Just be really gentle about it. You don't have to go busting through the paper like the battering ram, just until you get the tip through. And then sometimes it'll just bust through itself. So now this is the outside of my cover and the outside of my pages. I think you can see that those holes have been um, poked through and now I want to put them all together. So I want to lay my pages inside my cover and I'm gonna use my paper clip and clip them all together again. Put my pencil away. Just wanna make sure they're all lined up nicely. And I'm just gonna press down this fold again. I could use my spoon again if I wanted to. Okay. And open again to the center and just clip your pages together with a paper clip like this. So. Now we're going to sew our book together. So what I want to do is get some, I'm gonna use embroidery floss. And like I said in the beginning, um, if you have like a, a, like a bar of soap or a little bit of like a candle or whatever, just to get this thread um, nice and sticky. And what I like to do, I'm gonna turn this around so you can see. I like to measure my thread three times the height of my book. So one, and, I'll, and I'm a little extra. One, two, oops, and that's three, and I'm just gonna cut a little extra just so I have a little tail. It's always good to have a little more than a little less. And really quickly, I, like I said, I have beeswax, but you could use a, a little bit of a bar of soap or a candle, and I'm just gonna rub this on here just a couple of times to get the strands to stick together. You don't have to do this part, um, but I think it makes for a better result. So I realize that my book is blocking. So I just lay it on the beeswax and put my thumb over it and then just pull it through. I can hear it squeak. So that's probably enough. Put the wax, put the wax out of the way. There's my book. And now I'm gonna thread my needle. Like I said, you want a needle with a big enough eye, which is where you thread it, to get this through. I normally lick my thread, but because we're 
that's probably not what advised these days. I'm not going to see if I can thread it without. No, nope, I have to do it. All right. And you want to pull your needle down so you have a nice tail so it's not going to slide off. Now we're going to do the sewing part. We are not going to tie a knot in the end of our thread. We're just going to leave a tail. So I, to, to do this pamphlet stitch, you start from the center back. So it's through my cover and I want to make sure it gets through my pages. You may have to reline them up. So I'm sewing from the back, center, into the inside, and leaving a decently long tail. Now I'm on the inside, and you can either go up or down. I'm gonna go up. Let me move my paper clip over. So I'm gonna go up from the center, inside to the outside. And you may have to wiggle your needle around to find the hole in the cover as well as the hole in the pages. There we go. So now you can see it coming out the back, like so. And you wanna make sure that stitch is not like super tight, but is, you see that? Right here, the stitch, it's just nice and flat. So now I'm on the back again, and I'm gonna sew up into the top hole from the back, from the outside to the inside. And make sure that, oops, I got my tail cut there. Make sure that lies nice and flat against the spine. And now I'm back on the inside again. And now I'm going to sew down. So I'm gonna go down through that other hole. Second hole, the first hole. This is the first hole, the second hole from the top. And pull it through the back. And I'm gonna skip the center. We're gonna come back to the center at the very end, but I, we're going to skip that one for now and sew down into this hole. Boom, just like that. Make sure that's nice and flat. And now I'm on the inside again. And I'm going to sew down into the bottom hole from the inside to the outside, like so. Get my tail out of the way. So it should look like that. Now I'm on the back again, on the outside. The back and the outside, I mean, I mean the same thing. I'm gonna sew up into this stitch, this hole, I mean. Pull that nice and tight. And then I just have one more to go and I'm gonna sew out through the center. So you can see all of the stitches are done on the back or the outside on the cover side, but now I want to finish my stitching on the inside. And I'm gonna go right out through that center hole, like so. So you just made a book, look at that. Now, I'm gonna fold this and show you. You can see that both of these tails are on one side of that stitch. They're both here. I want one on each side. So I'm just gonna slide my needle right under that big long stitch that I made. Oops, dropped my needle. So now, I'm gonna take my needle off because I don't need it anymore. No, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna tighten up my stitches a little bit to make sure that they're all nice and tight, the inside and the outside. Okay. So now you can see, now that I've tightened up my stitches, 
and I put one thread on one side of that center hole and one thread on the other side, I am just going to tie a bow. You could tie a knot. You don't need to get particularly fancy with it. So I am just going to tie, like I would be tying my shoes. Boop. And you can tie a double knot if you want to make it nice and tight. And then I'm just gonna trim my ends to the same length. So I've got my scissors. And now, I take off my paper clip because I'm all done with that. You've made a book. So this is a simple, it's called a five hole pamphlet stitch. And I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, like I said, you can um, leave a comment and I will try and answer it as best I can. Um, and now you can use this for um, the for writing down your reflections about what's going on right now since it's a strange time that we are living through or you can use it for whatever you like these are also really fun to make as gifts for somebody so or if you wanted to like write a note to a friend and then give them the book and then they could write write a note back and hand it back to you um, so it's it's a little it can be a little tricky, but I think, I know that you can do it and you have plenty of time to practice. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed my bookbinding crafter noon and you can check out the library's Facebook page for the other crafter noons we've done, the story times we've done, and our daily poem for National Poetry Month. And also our website has all sorts of online online um, content that you can access while we can't be there for you physically and also if you have anything you need library related all of the staff were still uh, working from home and checking our email so I hope that you enjoyed today's bookbinding crafternoon and we will see you next time <laughs>